Tell me, tell me again the story of Jesus. Tell me, tell me again. My heart longs to. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a rich like me
tell me, tell me again the story of my Jesus. Tell me, tell me again my heart longs to
an answer Somebody here is wanting to give up Somebody here, you've been ready to quit But my God says, wait, hold on This thing, it ain't over Y'all remember the tower from last week, amen? Amen. amen? amen. Listen, I know it gets there comes a time in our life sometimes it seems like we want to throw in the towel. And I'm sure when Jesus was in the grave, amen, there's no question about it. The devil had come to him over and over again and said, you're done. You might as well give up. Listen, you're, you're all out. But I know what he said. God up in heaven looked down and said, listen, you need to understand something. It ain't over yet, amen? amen. And I thank God that for the Christian today, it ain't over yeah, listen, we may be down, but we ain't defeated, amen? That one preacher said it this way. I've got I said this morning talking about a diagnosis. He said a diagnosis is not final, amen? I'm glad that God makes the final decision on everything that we do in life, and I'm glad today for the Christian that we serve a resurrected Savior today. Listen, it ought to be the greatest and most exciting and happiest day. Listen, the devil has beat us down, tried to defeat us, tear us down, Put stuff in our mind. He's tried to kill our families. He's tried to kill our churches. But I got news for him. Listen, it ain't over yet. God's still on the throne. Amen. He's not been defunded. He's not been dethroned. They can't throw him out. They can't take over. Amen. He still owns it all. I got news for the devil. Listen, he is the one going to hell. And we're going to get to go to heaven. Amen. It ain't over yet. And boy, we ought to praise God for that today, amen, that we got a God up in heaven that loves us the way that he does and understanding down inside. Listen, there's something that lives down inside of me. As I said this morning, he didn't resurrect for himself. He resurrected for us, amen, amen. that we can have life and have life eternal. And you may as well enjoy it. Listen, if you don't enjoy, enjoy this kind of singing and you don't enjoy this kind of uh, life and you don't enjoy this kind of excitement in the Lord, then don't go to heaven. You're going to hate it there. Amen. Everything I read about it is glorious. Amen. Everything I read about it is exciting over there, amen. They're shouting and praising and, and worshiping the Lord. There ain't no doom and gloom on the other side. There ain't no drama going on. Thank God ain't no Facebook over there. Ain't no Twitter over there. Amen. Listen, it's just God Almighty, and we worship God and God alone, and we don't have to worry about those things in life when we get there. We ought to praise God for that today. Lord, we appreciate you being in the house of the Lord. They choir, enjoy that today. Thank you for the song. I appreciate those songs uh, greatly today. Listen, let's all stand for just a second today. We're going to do what we normally do around here while Blake plays for us. Every church I know of needs prayer today. This church needs prayer. I, I Listen, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in need of prayer. And I want you to take the time around the altar today if you can come and pray and come and pray with us. If not, you can pray right where you are. That'll be fine too, but we're going to go to the Lord in prayer here for just a few minutes today, and then we'll move on with the service. Father, we love you. And God, what a privilege, what an honor it is to be in the house of God once again today. Father, we thank you for every good and perfect gift you bestowed upon us, Lord, this week. And God, we thank you, Lord, for how you've kept us. And today you got us back once again to the house of God and back to a place of worship, Lord, where we can worship you. And I pray, Father, that today, God, we'd come and fall, Lord, before this altar today. And God, we'd rid ourselves of the things that's depressing us and beating us down in the defeat that we feel down inside. And God, we'd lay it on the altar and tell the devil that it ain't over yet, that God's still alive. The Lord Jesus Christ is still seated by the right hand of the Father. And there's still hope. And he didn't leave us helpless down here on this side. And we know that we got a home in glory just over there. I, I pray, God, we'd just find that joy that unspeakable and full of glory this morning, Lord, while we're here with you. Help us, Jesus. In a mighty way, if there's one come through the doors today that's lost and undone, I pray that today would be the day, Lord, that be saved before it's eternally too late. And, Father, I pray, God, that your will would be done. The Lord, in the midst of the service, bless all the singing uh, the rest of this day. And, Father, bless the preaching of the word today. I pray, God, for wisdom, power, 
and unction of the Holy Ghost that God I'd preach as a dying man to a dying people today and God before we'd get out of here today every soul in this place would magnify a holy God but God we'll never be able to do that Lord until we clean our own lives up and so Father I pray God while we ran this altar today God we'd learn to worship you and God we'd learn to ask for forgiveness today and God we'd repent of sins today and Lord we'd lay our burdens at the foot of the cross and God, we'd not pick them up. God, we'd, let, we'd leave them alone with you. And knowing that you and you alone are the only one that can handle them. Lord, save the lost today. And God, heal the sick today. And touch churches today. And bless pastors today. And bless the preachers of the word today, God. Uh, wherever they are, use us. And God, we walk out of these doors today. We can say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And God, we know that you've been magnified and you've been glorified. Father, through all things. Lord, we love you today. Thank you for what you've done for us. Thank you for what you're going to do. And God, we're going to praise you on credit right now for all things. We ask all these things in Christ's wonderful name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Well, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord today. You can be seated. If you're visiting us today, you are our honored guest. We appreciate you being here uh, this morning. I do appreciate the good choir this morning. I've enjoyed them while they were practicing and, and singing and having a good time today. Listen, I thank God. For those songs, Jane and I were just uh, getting, <coughs> excuse me, getting ready uh, there at the house this morning. I'll be honest, we had church this morning about 5.30 there at the house by ourselves, just listening to the songs of the Lord uh, today and, li and just listen to those songs there. And what a great time it was. But I thank God for what he's done already. Today in the morning service out here around the crosses today. And I appreciate you coming and being with us out there. And I pray that we will help to you in some way. Shape for me. Listen, it ought to be worth it all just to get up and see the sun come up this morning. Amen. We ought to have been rejoicing just because we could do that day, but we thank God for that. Let me give you a few announcements this morning, and then we'll try to move on with service. We've got a bunch of things we need to get done uh, today. Number one, <clears throat> don't forget there's no service here tonight. When we get done today, like I said, you'll, you'll be free the rest of the afternoon. Go enjoy your family and have a good time in the Lord. But let me just say this. Everybody that's going to work Friday and Saturday of next week in our stew. If you can possibly be here tomorrow night at 6.30, uh, we're going to have a meeting at 6.30. We're going to go over all the workplaces and where everybody needs to be uh, and look at all the orders uh, and those things at 6.30 tomorrow night. So if you can be here, we would love to have you here. That way you can fill a position for us either Friday or Saturday. If you cannot be here and you plan to help on Friday or Saturday next week for our stew sale, Please let me know today or call me uh, tomorrow during the day and let me know. Preacher, I'll help you wherever you need help at, and uh, we'll put you in a position somewhere. But we need your help uh, next Friday and Saturday for the stew sale and the barbecue chicken sale. But if you can, tomorrow night, try to be here, uh, and we'll go over all those positions. That way you'll know where you're going to be uh, and what you need to get done uh, by that. There again, also the mission trip coming up to Ohio. Uh, we're only three weeks away from today. Uh, before we leave, so those of you that are going, uh, we'll be leaving that Sunday right after church. So make sure that we're packed up and ready to go. Because as soon as I say the final amen, we're going to jump in the van and we're taking off to Ohio that day and be gone all week long. Say, hey, preacher, I'd like to go on that trip. I'd like for you to go. Just see me right after church. Amen. I'll tell you what we're going to be doing. And uh, it's going to be a good time of the Lord while we're gone uh, all week long. It's a good work week for the church. So you pray much about that. And uh, then don't forget our 16th anniversary here at the church, May the 16th. Uh, we'll have a morning service that day and uh, pray much for the morning service for that that day. Listen, we just look forward to a good time in that God has blessed us here uh, the last 16 years. I appreciate what the Lord has done. And uh, more than anything else, we want to honor him today, that day. Amen. We want to honor him every day, but we definitely want to honor him that day for what he's done for us here at the church. So if you'd like to come and you're visiting us today, We'd love for you to come. Our church invite folks to come uh, for May the 16th. And we're going to have dinner on the grounds that day. And uh, have a great time. Lord, you bring your food. And we'll eat yours if we like it. And you can eat mine if you like it. I don't eat what I don't like, just so you know. Amen. And most of the time I can look at it and tell whether I like it or not. Amen. I don't even have to just taste it. Amen. But I can look at it and tell. But we love to have you that day. Be a good time in the Lord uh, for that. Okay. All right. Any other announcements today? Miss Kristen. Okay. All right, so if you parents can get that in to her 
For those of you that are going to the Arise Conference, that would be awesome. And uh, if you're in here today and you have a child that's, that may want to go or think about going, please see Miss Kristen or come see us uh, before everything tries to get turned in there. Uh, we got a, just got, we got a couple of months or so, but we want to make sure everything is done and everybody's ready to go. Listen, your kid needs to be at camp or at this conference. I can tell you that now. Uh, they're going to miss out on a lot if they're not there, but uh, God's going to, I, I, I just know God's going to show up mightily uh, while we're there, so we'd love to have your kid there if they could possibly go, okay? All right, anything else today? Let me just say this. I think I mentioned this last week uh, on behalf of Brother Thacker. Uh, his service is going to be April the 17th, which is two weeks from today. It'll be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon in Greensboro. Uh, and uh, if you would like to go, please let us know. We'll, if enough people go, we're going to take the bus and go. Uh, if not, then we'll just be driving up uh, that day, but we'll be there most of the afternoon on that Saturday afternoon for his service. Pray for his dear wife and his daughter and his family, his grandkids. Uh, hold them up to the Lord. Miss Brenda flew home yesterday uh, with his remains from Washington State there. So y'all pray much uh, for them if you would. And I pray God help them in a, uh, in a mighty way. But do remember that if you'd like to go, <clears throat> we're going to be there. They got a lot of singing, a lot of preaching that day. And just going to, well, listen, we're going to honor God. And we're going to honor Brother Thacker that day. I will tell you that now. So try to go if you, uh, if you can, okay? All right, anything else? All right, I see she just run off with Beckett probably because he's fussing. I was going to sing happy birthday to him today, but I may have to get him after a while. Amen. He had a birthday on Monday uh, this past week, and so uh, we're going to, I might sing to him in a little bit. All right, Michael, come on, let's take an offering. We'll catch him. Huh? Y'all sung to me last week. You did? Uh, uh, Miss, that's right, Miss Debbie, you had a birthday the same day I did, didn't you? Come on up here, Will. They can sing to us together. <clears throat> I had an April Fool. Josh, you have a birthday? Your mom had a birthday. Oh, come on up here, Miss Marty. That's the way to come back to church. Amen. <laughs> come on up here. Somebody ratted on you. This is a Baptist church. You know they'll tell on you. <laughs> Amen. It ain't even politically correct no more, but you're still in a Baptist church. Amen. They'll rat on you in a minute. Anybody else have a birthday this week? Anniversary this week. Anybody have an anniversary? Miss Debbie, I understand, had a birthday on April Fool's Day, same day as mine. Hey, Miss Marty, when was yours? Today? Well, happy birthday today. Blake's got one coming up this coming Friday. She ain't come back yet. So Beckett had one on Monday. She, we'll, we'll sing to him after a while. Well, all right, stand sing happy birthday to us then. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Both of those ladies turned 24, and I turned 60, just so you know. Amen. I appreciate that. I was at the uh, uh, urgent care the other day, had to get a checkup, and the lady looked at my birthday, and one of the nurses that I know, which is a male nurse, coming in, he said, of all people, that birthday would be on April Fool's Day. I figured it'd be yours. Amen. <laughs> I told him I appreciate that. I'm glad you're not my nurse today. Hallelujah. Amen. But uh, praise the Lord for that. Michael, come on, let's take an offering this morning. All right, good ushers to come this morning. While they come and be turning to page 120, we're going to sing Victory in Jesus. 120. We'll go to the Lord in prayer first and bless our offering uh, before we get started this morning. Brother Scott, will you pray for us this morning? Amen. Let's all stand. 120, victory in Jesus.
And let me say this, if you're visiting with us today, you are our honored guest. We appreciate you being here uh, this morning, especially on this Easter Sunday morning and uh, during our resurrection service. We've got a couple of things we're going to do uh, just a little different today. Blake, don't run out on me yet, Brother Gene. This captain's big singer. You, you playing for them? I mean, he's not playing. Okay, all right. I, I seen him leaving. I just want to make sure. He, amen. Thought he'd give him a break. But uh, we're going to do things just a little different here uh, in just a few minutes. We, uh, we, we've never had a baptism on Resurrection Sunday, but we are going to have one here very shortly, uh, here in just a few minutes. But i got a few things we're going to say and do uh, first. And so you're going to be, listen, you're going to be in on that today. So we appreciate you being here, and uh, we thank God for you today. But Brother Gene, Miss Kathy, and Chevy, you going to help them today? Are you going to help them today too? They're going to come sing one for us today, first of all. Amen. Before we sing, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you better find out who he is and be a part of his kingdom. Amen. In that song we sang with the choir, it says, Wasting Your Time. I was uh, saved at 13, but I wasted a lot of time between now and the last few years of my life, and I wished I hadn't wasted that time. Right now, I'm serving God the best I can, the most I can, and I wish I had done it all my life. Because bring glory to his name in all that we do. Um, be with, as you say a little prayer for my wife as she sings this. There's a lot of words in this song. Listen to the words. And when I ask you to, I want you to sing the chorus with us. When I ask you to stand, ask, please stand with us and we're going to sing the chorus together. The gates and doors were barred and all the windows fastened down. I spent the night in sleeplessness and rose at every sound. Half in hopeless sorrow and half in fear the day would find the soldiers breaking through to drag us all away. Just before the sunrise, I heard something at the wall. The gate began to rattle and a voice began to call. I hurried to the window, looked down into the street, expecting swords and torches and the sound of soldiers' feet. But there was no one there but Mary, so I went down to let her in. John stood there beside me as she told me where she'd been. She said they've moved him in the night, none of us knows where. The stone's been rolled away, and now his body, it isn't there. We both ran towards the garden, then John ran on ahead. We found the stone, an empty tomb, just the way that Mary said. But the winding sheet they wrapped him in was just an empty shell. And how or where they'd taken him was more than I could tell. Oh, something strange had happened there, just what I did not know. John believed a miracle, but I just turned to go. Circumstance and speculation couldn't lift me very high Cause I'd seen them crucify him And then I saw him die yes. Back inside the house again The guilt and anguish came Everything I'd promised him Just added to my shame when at last it came to choices, I denied I knew his name. And even if he was alive, it wouldn't be the same. 
Suddenly the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume Light that came from everywhere Drove the shadows from the room And Jesus stood before me With his arms held open wide And I fell down on my knees And I just clung to him and cried Then he raised me to my feet As I looked into his eyes The love was shining out from him like sunlight from the skies Guilt in my confusion Disappeared in sweet release And every fear I'd ever had Just melted into peace Let's stand up Stand up, sing it again He's alive He's alive, he's alive and I'm forgiven, heaven's gates are open wide, he's alive, yes he's alive, he's alive and I'm forgiven, heaven's gates are open wide, he's alive, yes he's alive, he's alive and I'm forgiven, heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive, yes, he's alive, he's alive and I'm forgiven, heaven's gates are open wide, yes, he's alive, he's alive. Well, hallelujah, amen. I'm glad as a church that we can still shout, he's alive, amen? Yeah. Listen, if that don't just uh, stir you up, I don't know what will, I can tell you that now. I'm thankful today to serve a risen Savior. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Miss Charlie, come on up today, dear. I'm going to let Miss Charlie sing one for us today. She's got a brand new song that she's been practicing for us that she's going to sing, and then we're going we're gonna to preach to you here for a few minutes before we have the baptism. Miss Charlie, hey, that's all right. I'm over, I almost fell over the pew last Sunday morning. That's what I get for walking the pews, right? When darkness filled the sky, the day that Jesus died, in agony upon the bitter cross, they took his body down and laid it in tomb. His friends believed that everything was lost. But when the third day came, the darkness turned to light. When Mary heard her name and saw the living Christ risen to set the captives free, And he will come again and one. 
one by wood will rise from raises holy name and see the living Christ risen to set the captives free. says unless we humble ourselves and become as little children we'll not get to see the kingdom of God and I'll be honest with you the, our, the average adult today and the average let me just say this the average Christian adult today uh, has so much pride about them they have so much pride about them they couldn't they couldn't raise their hand and praise the Lord if they wanted to they're just full of pride wrapped up in pride and uh, God says we're gonna have to get like a little child and uh, so that we can worship him listen you got to lose sight of yourself if you're going to worship God. As long as you got your eyes on you, you can't worship God. Amen. But if you ever take your eyes off you and get out of that mirror and get out of those selfies and get out of who you are and, and everything that you are and figure out who he is, you won't have a problem, a problem praising God after that. Amen. But as long as it's all about us, uh, we're going to have a problem worshiping God. Amen. I'm glad today that we can just worship a holy God. I want you to turn your Bibles this morning to the book of Luke chapter number 9. Luke chapter number 9, I'll be honest with you, this was not the message I intended to preach this morning. Uh, I prayed my heart out uh, this week. I have got a message laying here in my Bible at the book of Genesis that's 11 pages long. Uh, 11 pages of notes that God gave me this week that I want to preach so bad it is unreal. But I know it's going to take me for a while, but I think it's one of the greatest thoughts God's ever given me from the Word of God is what He's given me this week in that message. You said, Brother Mike, why ain't you preaching today? Well, we got a baptism to do here in a little bit. I don't want to keep you but so long today. I'd like you to come back sometime or another. Amen. And so I'll wait till the next week. If I have to break it up in two parts, I'll break it up in two parts. But I was reading just over the, the other day, just several things uh, I was reading. God's always giving me thoughts, and I'm always uh, writing down thoughts. But the, but the one particular message that I, that I worked on uh, this past week, I cannot wait to get into it uh, next week and just share with you. Uh, here in the Word of God. But I, I want to share this with you today, being Resurrection Sunday and being who the Lord is and what God has done for us and how great God is and how good He is. I ran across a verse the other day that I was studying. This one little uh, phrase stuck out to me, and I began to pin down some notes here uh, and think about it. And the more I thought about it, the more I pinned down, and the longer it got, and the, the, longer, the more exciting it got uh, during that time. I don't tell you something. I don't know about you, but uh, when... When I get along with God, and, and uh, we were talking to somebody this morning, uh, and we were talking about uh, true worship. Listen, we, we have the idea that we have to be in a crowd of people, and we have to be raising our hands and throwing our hands up, and we've got to have a band, and we've got to have the smoke, and we've got to have the lights. Listen, if it takes that you, uh, to arouse you, it's going to take that to keep you. Amen. 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 They're out there the days, they said, that's what I want. I know, but you don't have anything leave amen I, I need something to take with me when I leave and go to the house I need something in the midnight hour when the band's not there I need something in the dark of the hour when the lights are not on amen I need something when there ain't no smoke around amen I need something I can trust God with and trust in God with 
And all through the Word of God, there's things that God will give us and promises that He will give us we can stand on and look at and realize how great our God really is. But I want to read here in Luke chapter number 9, and I'm going to start reading in verse 37, go down through verse number uh, 43, and try to help you for just a, a few minutes this morning. And I'm going to call some folks back and, and uh, baptize them. We're going to do what the church ought to be doing. That is seeing folks saved and, and joining the kingdom of God. That's, it. That's the main thing about the church anyway, amen. It ain't about my preaching, amen. It's about seeing souls saved, even though faith coming by here and hearing by the word of God. There's two things about the gospel. Number one, the Bible said it has to be preached. Number two, it has to be heard. Amen. Amen. Right. And so you listen to this today. Maybe it'll be a help to you and excite you a little bit and get you back on your feet here and, and then we'll get out of here today. The Bible says in Luke chapter 9, verse 37, and it came to pass that on the next day when they would come down from the hill, much people met him talking about Christ. Now, he's in the parable here or the, the scripture here where we find a bunch of powerless disciples. He had given them the power to, I mean, defeat the enemy in every way, shape, form, or fashion that you could ever find if you read the Word of God. Jesus had bestowed the power. And by the way, let me say this to you. He's bestowed that upon the church today, too. Oh, yeah. Now, I realize that the church don't look like that today. As a matter of fact, if you go and read, I think it's Haggai chapter number 2 and, and verse number 2, and, and it talks about what, how we see the church today. Amen. And when people look around the church today, I can tell you that they're not seeing the church in that fashion today that Jesus has put upon us the power to defeat the enemy. Everything that Christ ever done for us, he's given us power to do it. Amen. Amen. And he has given us power to overcome today. Matter of fact, he teaches us to be overcomers. He teaches us to we're to rule and to reign on this earth down here. Amen. He teaches us what we're supposed to do. But he's talking here about a bunch of powerless disciples that had the power of God supposedly on their life. They'd been granted that by God himself. Amen. Just like you and I. And he says, and they came, on the, came to pass it on the next day when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly cried out. And it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him, hardly departed from him. In other words, he, he's going through all these things and having this bad uh, seizure, and he's been he's foaming at the mouth, and he's, not being, he's bruising himself by what he's doing right here. And verse number 40, look at this. It says, and I besought thy disciples to cast him out, <laughs> and they could not. I besought thy disciples. You know what he's saying? I besought the church to cast him out, and they couldn't. He said, I've already been to your men. I've already been to those men that you put the power on. I've already been to those disciples that you gave the power to. I've already been to those that you said is going to have the power to do this. I've already laid him at their feet. And they've said, uh, I can't help you. I can't do anything about it. What a sad testimony. That ain't my message today. But I want you to understand something. What a sad testimony for a Christian today. What a sad testimony for a disciple of Christ today. What a sad testimony for a church today. Listen, when, the, when, when God's sending our people, people our way just day after day or week after week, and we have to look at them and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you out of it. And let me just tell you something. Listen, if you ain't right with God, and listen, the power of God's not on you, you can't help him anyway, amen? Our hearts have to be right before we can help anybody else. The problem with the disciples were they were not following the command of Christ that Christ had told them to do. That's our problem all the time. We get where we don't want to follow Christ. We want to follow ourselves. We want to follow something, something else. But don't tell you something, it's hard to follow this book right here. It's hard to follow this book. It's hard to read it and swallow it, amen? Listen, it's bitter to the stomach when you do sometimes, amen? It hurts. It, the, the Bible says it cuts, uh, uh, to, it cuts like a, a, a double-edged sword even to the asunder uh, of the soul. It cuts deep down in us. And we don't want to have to read it. and We don't want to have to study it. and We don't want to have to swallow it. and We don't want to have to. Therefore, 
we have a tough time helping anybody else. I'll say this, and I'll say this boldly. And you can get mad at me if you want to, but I find very few Christians, very few Christians that I take a problem to. Let me say that again, church, I love you. But I find very few Christians that I take a problem to. Why? Because I can't trust them to pray. I can't trust them to show up God's house. I can't trust them to show up in Bible study. I can't trust them to show up at the altar. I can't trust them to show up on a work day. I can't trust them to show up and show God. Why would I trust my problems to them? Amen. I find very few I can trust anything with. Uh, now, there's a few people out there that I know that serve God. I know they're going to pray. I know they got the power of God on them. I know they listen. I know they read the Bible. I know they study. I know they pray on the altar. Listen, you find very few and far between this day and time. Amen. Listen, the church needs the power of God on it yeah. in every way, shape, form, and fashion. But you find very few. I ain't try, listen, I ain't trying to th- throw you down this morning. I'm hoping I'm going to help you here in a minute, amen? But the truth is the truth. Say amen. amen. The truth is just the truth. But he said here, listen, I carried him to all of them, and they couldn't help him. Now, I like what Jesus said right here in verse number 41. And Jesus answered and said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. By the way, he was talking to his men. He was talking about his disciples. He said, bring him over here, you perverse generation, you faithless generation. Hey, that's that's my God. (laughs) That's the one I serve. My Jesus wouldn't do that. Maybe you serve another one outside the God of the Bible. Amen? But I got one that don't mind telling the truth. I I don't mind just, I I got a Lord that don't mind putting it out there straight where we can understand it. Amen? They, They probably didn't like it. But he said, hey, Jesus answered, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring that son, bring that boy over here. Bring that boy over here. I gave y'all all this power. I gave you everything to do it with. And he's laid him at your feet. Now bring him over here. If you're not going to help him, if you're not going to get your heart right where you can help him, <laughs> bring him over here. I'm still God. I still got the power. Amen. Just bring him right here. And the Bible says here, verse number 42, and as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down. Listen to this. The devil threw him down and tear him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Can you imagine? The devil's brave. He's a brave rascal now. Here he is standing. Here he is a dummy. Here he is standing before Jesus Christ himself, and Jesus had already said, I, I, I'm going to take care of him. And the devil trips him up and throws. Listen, I, let me just tell you what the devil will do for you today. On your way to the altar, he'll kick your feet out from under you. He don't mind that Jesus is in the house. He don't mind coming to church with Jesus in the house. He don't mind him being around. What he minds is you getting to God and getting your heart right with God. He will literally kick your feet out from under you and tear you asunder on your way to the altar. That's right. On your way to Christ. I see people from time to time we're trying to deal with them and trying to work with them and trying to get the, the, the gospel in them and, and trying to get them to get their life straight, Brother Jerry. And, and listen, the more you deal with them, the more the devil kicks your feet out from under them all the time. And I tell them all the time, listen, don't pay no attention uh, to that mess. Stay away from that. Uh, man, so they, listen, I can tell you now, he's going to tell you down. He's going to kick your feet out from under. He's going to destroy I, person after person after person that we deal with, we disciple with, uh, we counsel with over and over again. As you said, Brother Mike, I'm just having so much. Pr- hey, stop letting him kick your feet out from under you. Right. He has the power to do it. And he will kick your feet out from under you every time you go to the altar. Every time you try to run to Jesus, he's going to knock you down. He can keep you as long as you're out there, but he knows if you ever get to God, he's in a world of trouble, amen? Amen. But here's this young man, and he's finally coming to the Lord. He's been with the disciples. He's finally coming uh, to the Lord right here, and the Bible says, uh, yet, and the devil, the devil threw him down. Can you imagine that? Now, I don't know if somebody was carried. Very well could have been. Can you imagine the devil just snatch him out of his arm, throw him down on the ground? And didn't tear them apart. By the way, that could be one of your children one day. 
By the way, some of our children now, the devil has them. I said the devil has them. And he's tearing them down. Now look up here at me. And there's some of us in here can't do anything about it. <laughs> We're having a hard time. We're struggling just to get them to Jesus. We're trying to get them to Jesus and the devil's tearing them apart. He's tearing us apart. He's throwing them on the ground. He's ripping them apart. Everything that he can do. And we're doing all that we can to get them to God. And we still can't get them there. That's right. A lot of times we're powerless to get them there. But if we can ever get them to Jesus, if we can ever get them to the Master. The Bible says here, and he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. <laughs> And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Listen to this. And healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Now, I cannot imagine the response of this father right here. Uh, when he's watching, watching his kid foaming at the mouth and now he's watching the devil tear him apart while he's on the way with Jesus standing there and he's watching the devil tear him apart on the way. He's having enough faith still trying to get him to uh, the Lord himself and he's having enough faith to get him there. And he finally gets him there. And Jesus rebuked the spirit, which the only one can uh, sometime. He healed him and delivered him again to his father. And then in verse 43 is what I want to share with you real quick and make it just a little exciting for you right here if we can. Amen. And in verse number 43, listen to what he says in these first few words. And they were all amazed. They were all amazed. I just happened to read through that the other day and that one little thing stuck out to me right there, that they were all amazed. Let me ask you something. When's the last time you were amazed over something God done? Amen. I, I see people amazed about people all the time and, and, and things that, about what's going on all the time. They're always amazed at some, some sports uh, thing that's going on. They're, they're amazed at some uh, big person done did this, uh, this, that, and other. When is the last time that we have, we have been in amazement over something that God has literally done in our life with our children, with our marriage, with our home, with our church. Listen, it's hard to get anybody excited over what God's done. A man called me this week, and uh, he was rejoicing because his daughter got saved. <laughs> He said, preach, I just had to call and share with you. My daughter just got saved. Fell on the conviction at the Wednesday night service. Got saved on Thursday. We called me. He was just all excited about his daughter getting saved. You can tell that to the average church. They, they go, really? Here, here's that religious crowd in the Christian crowd. Huh? I'm so happy for him. <laughs> Don't make me get up in these pews today, please. And the angels in heaven rejoicing. You can't even, you can't even hear heaven yeah. because the angels are rejoicing. Yeah. <laughs> They're shouting so much in heaven. The glory is falling up there. And God's wanted to fall on the church and fall around the church and fall around the uh, church people and everything else. But listen, listen, there's so much going on in the church that we can't even get God in the middle of it to get excited. But I want you to understand something. I still stand amazed at a holy God today. Yeah. I Listen, I'm still amazed at his goodness today. I'm still amazed at his glory today. I'm still amazed at his grace today. I'm still amazed at his greatness today. I'm still amazed at his gentleness today. I'm still amazed at his person today. I'm still amazed at his purity today. I'm still amazed at his promises today. I'm still amazed at God's people today. I'm still amazed at the pardon of God today. I'm still amazed at the provision of God today. I'm still amazed at the purpose of God today. I'm still amazed at the precepts of God today. I'm still amazed today that I get to serve a holy God today. It's an amazing thing to me that I can wake up morning after morning. And I tell people this all the time. And the reason I like to say this is because there's times I couldn't do this. I tell them all, all the time, I woke up this morning by myself. I put both my feet on the floor by myself. Amen. Stood up on my own. Dressed myself. Amen. I was able to go to the Lord in prayer by myself. Amen. I was able to walk out the door by myself. I was able to get myself around by myself. 
I'm still amazed at a holy God that will do that for me every day of my life. And the Bible says here in verse number 43, and they were always, listen, I understand we get a few of us a little shook up every now and then and get a little bit of amazement going on and get a few woos here and there, but what would it be like if everybody got amazed at God? What would it be like if you finally got on board and you shouted one time? Your wife would look at you and go, what the world you been drinking? He ain't never done that. She ain't never done that. I ain't never heard that child act like that. They, I've never heard a pip squeak uh, out of them. I've never heard them uh, glorify God. Listen, they'd probably have you at the doctor in the morning getting a checkup, wondering what you've been, or, or have you doing a drug test, one or the other. By the way, every now and then, because I st I'm still a CDL driver, I have a Class A CDL driver's license. I plan to keep them. In case y'all kick me out, I can drive a truck. I always keep more than one egg in the basket, just so you know. Amen? And every now and then, Brother Gene, having a CDL driver's license, being your pastor, I have to go get drug tested. Now, you think it ain't a funny occasion when you know two or three people in the doctor's office. <laughs> and you walk up in there and I said, I'm just here for a drug test today. You know what one asked me last week, Ron? Did your church send you? <laughs> I said, yeah, three of them did. One guy told me last week, and I told him, he said, what are you doing? I said, I got to get a drug test. He said, a drug test? I said, yeah, I got to have it. He said, I think every preacher ought to have them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, we ain't above taking drugs if we have to every now and then, but I don't want to. Amen. But listen, uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But I walk in up and I look at that girl, and, and she knows me. I said, I'm just here from a drug test. And she's like, this just don't add up. A preacher up in here getting have you seen that crowd I have to pastor all the time? <laughs> Sometimes a good, strong monster drink before it comes to church is good. It helps me through. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm just still amazed at the power of God. Yeah. I'm still amazed at the presence of God. Yeah. I'm still amazed at the glory of God. I begin to jot these things down the other day about God himself. I'm still amazed how God, how Christ himself could leave heaven. I'm talking about, li listen to me, somebody that would leave the splendor of ages in glory, somebody that would leave the sacredness of the angels, somebody would leave, that would leave the seat of authority to come down here for the likes of me. I'm still amazed by it, yeah. that he would leave that place just for me. Listen, the average Christian won't get out of their seat to get, to get over and let somebody sit down today. Amen? Amen. Amen. But Christ himself left the portals of glory, yes. left the seat of authority, yes. left the sacredness of the angels, left the splendor of heaven on the other side, yes, and said, I'll go down for them, Lord. I'll meet that need. God, I'll go if you just send me. I'm still amazed how Christ could lower himself the way that he did. What do you mean? He stepped down from the coronation of heaven, everything about heaven. Listen, he stepped down in his position in heaven. Uh, not only that, he stripped himself of the glory of heaven and put on the robe of a man and came down in the likeness of a man down here just for you and I that we can have life and have life eternal. Listen, the, but one writer said it this way, that he became selected and suitable and satisfied for the sacrifice that was needed for God Almighty. He lowered himself. I'm amazed that a God up in heaven, Jesus Christ himself, would lower himself to my standards and come down here for me. I'm still amazed by that. Can you imagine if the whole church, I'm talking about every born-again Christian, or those that say they're born again, can you imagine if the whole church got excited about that? Can you imagine if the whole church got, listen, the Bible says here they were all amazed. They were all amazed. It wasn't just a few of them. Every one of them looked around and said, Wow. What in the world is wrong with us? Amen. They didn't look and say, what's wrong with Jesus? They said, what's wrong with us? But I'm amazed that he'd leave heaven the way he did. 
I'm amazed that he would lower himself the way he did. I'm still amazed at how he could come to this earth, listen to this, and live holy. Look up here at me. Now, I don't know what God you serve and what Lord you serve, but my Bible teaches me that my God never sinned while he was on this earth. He wasn't born in sin. He never sinned while he was here. He didn't sin on the way back. He still lives holy today. Listen, I'm still amazed that he could come to this earth. It just proves to me that we can because we're supposed to be in the likeness of Christ. We're supposed to be like him. For all these people all said, Tom said, that well, Brother Mike, you know, you just can't stop sinning. You just can't. Get... <laughs> Can I ask you who you're serving? I'm amazed <laughs> after living on this earth for 60 years. <laughs> I am amazed that he could come and live a sinless life. I've tried it. I ain't done it yet. I'm not perfect in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And it still, still worries me, uh, and I think about it time and time again. When I think, Brother Gene, he could come to here and walk for 33 years and never sin. Most of us today can't walk three minutes without sin. Especially if you've got a cell phone on you. I've never seen so many dead beats on cell phones in my entire life. Hello. And don't drive down a main road somewhere in a main street with people walking. Somebody's going to get killed and run over. They walk right out the street. Keep go! I just about hit one a couple of weeks ago. Jane said, he ain't looking. I said, I know. <laughs> he better be glad I was. <laughs> what if I'd have been on mine? <laughs> hey, man, slap, boom, bam. I mean, you should have been watching. No, you should have been watching. If I'm going to walk, I'm going to watch where I walk. Y'all might all try it sometime. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm amazed how I could live a holy life. A person with no sin, listen to this. A person that was never harmless, the Bible says there was no guile found in him. Listen to this. There was never any guilt found in his mouth. He never said anything that he had to feel guilty about. I'm sure there may be a few in here may, may have that, but I don't have that. Every now and then I say some things I have to feel guilty about. But he was harmless. <clears throat> he was holy. He had no guilt in him. He had no sin in him. And I love this part. He was helpful. Why? Because he sought to help everyone. Let me say that again. Sought to help everyone. Now don't tell me for one minute we don't pick and choose who we're going to help. Amen. We're all good at it. We, we pick and choose. We're going to help. Well, you're going to help him? Well, I, 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 why can't you help him? Well, I, I just think I'll help. Well, how come, how come you can't help him? I, well, I just, I'm glad for my sake. Look up here. That he didn't pick and choose. I'm glad he chose us all. Because I want to tell you something. If he had been picking and choosing, I wouldn't have got chosen. I came from the other side of the tracks. I know what it is. But I'm, I'm amazed, listen, I'm amazed that he could come down here and live for 33 years and live a holy life. You know what the Bible says? <laughs> Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right. He's a thrice holy God, which means we ought to be a thrice holy Christian. Amen. Wait a minute. He's a thrice holy God, which means we ought to be a thrice holy Christian. That means at the very least you ought to be three times as holy as what you are now. Amen. I don't know how far that's going to carry you, but I'm just saying you ought to be three times as holy as what you are now. You ought to be three times as holy as what you are now. Amen? I am amazed that he could come down and live a sinless life. He said these words in Romans chapter 12, Paul did. I beseech you therefore, brethren, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You may prove what is that good and perfect, acceptable 
will of God in your life. Nobody wants to commit to him. They don't want to commit their body to him. <coughs> I was talking to a lady the other day. Now, this may strike some of you, but you'll get over it. I was talking to a lady the other day. She was, we were talking about Christianity. And she was telling me about a Christian life. And Jane and I both were there. She was talking about Christian life, this, that, and the other. And we talked on a little Brandy's daddy has one of the best sayings I've ever heard in my entire life. He told it to me one time, and I got a hold of it, and I never lost it. We were on a mission trip, and he said to me one day, he said, listen, if you don't open your mouth, people will know how stupid you are. <laughs> <clears throat> I eat that one a lot of time. But we're standing there talking to her after a little while. She was talking about her Christianity, this is how she loved God, this, that, and other. And then the very next words out of her mouth, Jane said something about she's from Durham, and I ain't gonna call her name. None of you, none of you here know her. I do know that. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe you do know her. Yeah. Maybe I ought to back up a minute. <laughs> she's from Durham, and after all that talking, she said, "Yeah." And she said, and, "And I run a tattoo parlor uh, in Durham. I own a tattoo parlor in Durham." Now, boy, he just got quiet. <laughs> Y'all can look up here at me. I'm not ashamed to say this. You can get all of them you want, but it's against the will of God. Don't make me break Bible this morning because I will go Bible. We'll just stay here for a while, and I don't want to have to do that. God don't need for you to break. God don't need for you to mark your body up, show him that you love him. That's right. He just needs you to live holy. Right. He didn't say go put my name on your, on your wrist and that my, my name. He just asked you to live holy. Amen. Amen? If, if, that, if that's what you got to do to show me you love Jesus, look what I did right here. I got Jesus. At, yeah, but you was at the hell holes last night. You've been living in sin most of your life. And does that really mean it? No, that's not what God's asking for. No. I'm amazed that he can come down and live such a holy life. But he asked us also to live a holy life. Now let me just say this to you so I won't make some of you so mad this morning. If you got a tattoo, get over it. Get over it. If you're a Christian, leave it alone. Don't get no more. And don't brag about the ones you got. Leave it alone. You made a mistake. You got it, Brother Mike. It ain't none of your business, but no, I don't. <laughs> Most people like me get them where you can't see them. That's why I'm saying it ain't none of your business, but no, I don't. And I don't plan to get one either. Amen? I'd rather just serve God and worship God the way we're supposed to in life. It ain't the end of your life if you do. It ain't going to send you hell if you do. Show Him you love Him through your life. Show Him you love Him through your living. Make that body an example for God. And let God, you do, look, look at God and say, God, what do you want to do with this thing? I can't do nothing with it. Amen? What do you want to do with it? Lord, I've been trying to control it. I can't. What do you want to do with it, God? Let God do something with it. Let God put it on display. Let God come on the scene. Let God put on a robe of righteousness over top of you. And let God show you off for a while. Listen, then you can strut around in the righteousness of God and knowing that God put you there and you didn't put yourself there. But I'm amazed at how holy he lives. Let me say this, and I got to quit. Lord, help me. I'm amazed that he would lay down his life for me the way that he did. Look up here. Those of you going to go get baptized, y'all going, going back to the room, start getting ready. I'm going to quit right here. Amen. I'm amazed that he would lay down his life for me the way he did. And we say, preacher, listen, I got news for that crowd that think they sought Jesus out and they found him and they killed him. Amen. He said, no man taketh my life. <laughs> he said, I lay it down freely. Amen. They, they, listen, they, they, it, was, it was determined, it was by the determinate counsel of God that he go to an old rugged cross. From the beginning, it was determined that he was going to go to an old rugged cross. 
for you and I. Doesn't that amaze you today? Amen. That he would, listen, he would, he, would, he would completely deny himself, completely deny himself and lay down his life for you and for me. And then listen to this. The Bible says he was lifted up on a cross. He was lifted up on a cross. And while he's hanging on the cross, laid down his life, gave it all up. I'm still amazed that he looked down at a crowd just like you and I and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Doesn't that just amaze you today? Amen. That we serve such an amazing God today. Amen. And that our Lord Jesus Christ loved us that much. That he, I, listen, there's so many more things in here I could get to today, but I'm running out of time. But he loves you that much today. You don't have to be where you are in your life. You can be everything for Christ. If we'll ever sit back for just a little bit, little bit and say, wow, <laughs> I want that right there. I want all of God. And I want all of God in me. I, I'm just amazed by the things of God. Boy, if we could just wrap our minds around that there, what a blessing it would be in our life. Michael, come on up today. Michael's going to lead y'all a few songs today or a few people going to sing today while we're in here. We're going to go back here and get ready. And we're going to do something that I enjoy doing that every church ought to be doing. That's adding to the church. Never done this on a Resurrection Sunday, but we're going to do it today. And he's going to lead y'all in a few songs. Y'all sing a few songs while we go back and get ready. And we're going to come, back, come out in just a minute and have a baptism here. And then I'll come back out for just a minute. Amen? You scoping them out, Mike? You got them picked out? Lamb of God 
left his glory above to bear it to dark cavalry so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and it's change it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true its shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. We'll sing to the old rugged cross and its change and some day for a crown. This is, okay, listen, we believe, here's, here's how we believe in baptism. We believe you must repent and be saved first uh, and then be baptized. It is a first command of Christ after we're saved is to be baptized. And it is that outward showing of an inward change in our life. And the, just like Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead, this is resurrection for us right here. When we bury that old man and we bury the sins of that old man, and we raise him back up a brand new person in Christ. Listen, this is not what saves us, amen? What saves us, we have to humble ourselves and realize we're lost and come before a holy God and ask him to come in our heart and listen, remove all that sin and save us. This is just showing the world and those around us that yes, I have done that and I want to show the world that I'm a born again Christian. I want to live for Christ. And let me just tell you something about Kaylee. I'm, of course, I've known her from birth, amen? Her mom and dad were in our youth class at our home church years ago. Loved them to death. They're saved, born again. And uh, Kaylee went through this a while back, been five, six years ago. We talked about it the other night. And she thought she had made a commitment to the Lord, and she had not made a true commitment. And then back a while back, been five, six months ago now, God got a hold of her heart uh, during the service, and she finally got things right with God. She just committed her heart and life to God. And I talked to her the other night again. And I said, Kaylee, did you get this thing settled? Did you make it right? And she said, yes, sir, I know I've got it right. And I said, then let's go serve God. Let's get it right and let's go serve God. And Katie, Katie, that's what you plan to do today. Amen? Settle this thing and go serve God after this. You want to show the world you're saved, you're born again Christian, you belong to Christ. And you want to bury that old man, be risen a brand new person in Christ. Is that what we're here for? Amen. 
Amen, Kaylee. Because of your statement of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is Miss Carrie Webster. Her and Brother Dwayne have been visiting us for some time now. I can't remember how many months. And I could go back through this long story with her, and uh, but she lived right across the road from the church over here. Uh, when we built the church, uh, and we, when we built the original building, uh, she was there, and uh, she never never came and visited us at the church. And uh, so back, it's been 10 years ago now when y'all got married? 10 yeah, years ago, <clears throat> her and Brother Dwayne got married. And they were looking for a church to get married in, and I couldn't marry them at the time, and they got another preacher, and, and we just loaned them the church <laughs> to get married. And matter of fact, Blake came and played for them. He came and played for that wedding, and they got married in the old church, and that's been 10 years ago. And uh, I stayed mad at her for all those years because they still did business. <clears throat> I loaned them the church. <laughs> Amen. And I'm just kidding about that. And uh, I didn't really, <laughs> didn't really meet them a lot. Uh, but then a while back, Brother Dwayne got to talk to me scared, and they were looking. They want to get back in church, and they knew they needed to be in a good church somewhere, and Carrie said she looked at him and said, well, how about that church that now we got married? That's, a, that's an independent Baptist church. That's what you used to. And he's like, really? And uh, she he said, yeah. She said, let's go try that out. Well, guess what? They've been here ever since. Amen. Yes. And uh, I praise the Lord for Brother Dwayne and Miss Carrie and their family. Their kids are here uh, today. And uh, listen, pray for them. Uh, they've, they've, they've already become a part of the ministry. And today they're going to become a part of New Life Independent Baptist Church also. Uh, but her husband, Brother Dwayne, got concerned about her soul. Back in November last year, began to witness to her, and she accepted the Lord, and her husband won one to the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Yes. I said a while ago that I am amazed. I am amazed at God, that God will still love us that long and keep us that long, carry us that far, and still save us through all that. That he had put somebody in our, in our path to witness to us and show us Christ and love on us that much. I am so amazed by that. Miss Carrie, I'm amazed that God's done what he's done through this whole little story that we just talked about. Yes. Miss Carrie, today you know you're saved, born again, washed in the blood, and ready to go to heaven. Amen? Yes, All right, Miss Carrie, because of your statement of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. church all the time. Don't make the Martins mad. Whatever you do, don't make the Martins mad. And of course, now you can see why big as Ian is. We don't want to make him mad. Amen? I'm just kidding. But uh, Ian got saved. Would you tell me this morning, December the 6th? December the 5th, uh, back this past year, Ian got saved, uh, and we got to talk about the baptism, and he wanted to follow up in baptism also, and show the church and show the world uh, that he belongs to God. I don't know if y'all have heard him singing in the choir and some of the specials he's been doing lately, but I tell my wife all the time, his voice has developed so much in the choir it's just unreal. And Ian, I appreciate you being up here and serving God. And be, listen, being out in the public uh, doing that all the time, I appreciate and love him and the Lord. And, uh, and I love this family. But Ian, you know you're saved, born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, and ready to go to heaven. God yes, calls you home, right? Ian, because of your statement of faith, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. got a fourth one here today, <laughs> and uh, this, this is a new one. I've never really done this this quick before, but I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do it. Austin, watch that thing. It's real slick, buddy. Yeah, I got it. But Austin got saved back in 2016, and uh, I think it was 2016. Was that right? Yeah, 2016. 
And of course, and most a lot of you don't know Austin, but Austin's been away, and he's part of our army. And uh, I appreciate and love our military and what he's done. And he's been away, been away from here the whole time. They were stationed in Hawaii for years. They just moved back, I think it's Jacksonville. Fayetteville. Uh, Fayetteville, they're back in Fayetteville now. And, uh, and I, matter of fact, I'm not sure he knew we was even doing this no. baptism today. They came here today, every now and then, they'll drive down here and be with us. We've known Emily since a kid. And uh, so we're here today. And so Austin ran to the back a while ago and he said, Preacher, can I go ahead and be a part of this? I've been gone away so long. Uh, and I was saved and I was never baptized. Amen. And so he ran to me today. I want to be baptized and follow up in baptism. And I appreciate that in him. I want to make that outward showing that he belongs to God and that he's a child of God. And I appreciate him and what he does for our country and how he stands for our country. Matter of fact, let's give him a hand today. Let's give our country a hand today. Amen. Listen, you'll, you'll not find a more patriotic person, a more patriotic preacher than this preacher right here. I love our military and what they do. And I appreciate these young men and those that give their life for this country. And that's why I fight so hard for it all the time. But I thank God for a young man, even in his position, that will run back and say, Preacher, I need to get in on this. I want to be baptized. I want to show the world. And Austin, I appreciate that today. You know you're saved. You know you're going to heaven when you die. Amen. No better feeling in the world. Austin, because of your statement of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Michael, where have you at? Y'all can lead us in a couple more songs. We're going to be out in just a minute. Amen. As soon as we get dried off. All right. Let's all stand. If we would turn to page 113. 113. We're singing Glory to His Name.
350, page 350, we're going to sing the sweet by and by. Stand it for just a minute to be fine too. It'll be okay because we're gonna get out of here in just a second, brother Dwayne. I want you and Miss Carrie to come on back up here, if you would. And uh, I tell you, we appreciate this family. We've grown to love them uh, and appreciate them. And uh, they've already been here working in the church. Matter of fact, Miss Carrie has been taking on a big part of our stew orders and stuff this year and and uh, helping out with that. And uh, when I met with them a couple weeks ago about joining the church, and I told them, you know, that what we expected here at the church. Uh, and they didn't have any problem with that. She said, well, I've been saved, but I haven't been baptized. Uh, but on the way to get that settled, and uh, they want to be a part of New Life Independent Baptist Church. And so today, uh, we're going to bring them before the church to be members of New Life Independent Baptist Church. They've met all the requirements of, the, of what the church statement is. And so I need somebody to move, make a motion that we accept them, Brother Mike, make a motion that we accept them as members here of New Life Independent Baptist Church. I need a second on that. Brother Dean is going to second that. Today, any questions on that today? Anybody have any questions at all? All I can tell you about them, they're wonderful people. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm going to tell this on Miss Carrie. Uh, since she's here now, she's going to be official. She makes a mean pound cake. I'm on a sugar rush. I had two of them this week for my birthday. <laughs> I'm on a sugar rush. Amen. And they were good, but I appreciate it. No, we're not the reason you're fine. Uh, that's right. That's right. But I love him, Lord. Listen, everybody in favor, Brother Dwayne West and Miss Carrie being members of New Life Baptist Church, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like so. Amen. Miss Carrie, we love y'all.
know some people I haven't met yet. Um, not that I don't want to. It's just I hadn't learned everybody yet. But everybody here has just been so welcoming to us. <laughs> uh, we've enjoyed getting to know the ones we have got to know, you know, uh, a little personally and fellowshipping with. And uh, we just look forward to continue to grow in the Lord with everybody Amen. and serve Amen. God. Hopefully over time we'll get to meet y'all. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Deborah. Blaine, appreciate you.